Hi, Alexa. Hey. Is that uh, video too? Yeah, okay. it's doing a video. And um, I'm just uh, talking with Alexa Clay here today, who has a wonderful book called The Misfit Economy, which I have not read yet. And she's going to talk a little bit about what she does, which is something to do with anthropology. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things we were talking about moments earlier uh, was this idea of culture hacking. Um, and so, yeah, I grew up, both my parents were anthropologists and learned about, um, I guess, cultural preservation um, and in many ways in which we can sort of analyze and take apart and deconstruct cultures. But then for me, the challenge more of this generation is one of kind of cultural hacking and remixing. And, um, you know, we're all born into these cultures that we didn't shape in any way. So, Could you define what you mean by hacking a little bit? Yeah. So in, in the Misfit Economy, we looked at um, computer hackers in this old system of, um, of much more sort of groups like anonymous you know so uh sort of vigilant hackers but then also how it's an ethos that's spilling over more so you know you were just saying oh we run these hack nights here where we bring open data and run various projects in chicago um and i yeah i guess for me i'm really interested in people that um hack uh as a job description and hack cultures where it doesn't have to be related to technology um, or kind of like cybersecurity and penetrating firewalls and things like this, but it can be more about transforming cultures um, from the inside and and anyone can be a culture hacker, I guess. Yeah. Let me widen the conversation a little bit. We're here at the um, Institute of Cultural Affairs in Chicago's Uptown neighborhood and we're talking with, um, here with Alexa is Steve Adiger who's, oh, who's in front of a really bright window and yes. isn't going to look good in this video. But I just wanted to let you guys know that he's here because so um, we're just having a conversation about some culture hacking ideas that we're cooking up here in Chicago. Uh -huh. So um, tell me some more about your book, Alexa. Uh, the book really looks at different misfits. So um, people outside of the system and you know, gangs, pirates, the Amish, people that are not fully participating in the mainstream economy. So looking at, um, in many ways, you know, these shadow economies and how they're influencing and impacting mainstream capitalism. And then also looking at, you know, people that might be insiders within the system who identify as misfits. So someone, for example, who could be in the Chamber of Commerce but wants to turn it into a Chamber of Commons. Uh, I don't know if those folks are identified, but we do profile actually two young guys in Ohio who did this, who really went about thinking about creating uh, local and sustainable jobs. And um, one ended up completely revamping the Chamber of Commerce and how it could apply its thinking to actually, you know, building local economy as opposed to just creating uh, influence for industry to come and do its thing and then leave. So Alexa, what would you say are the like uh, prime movers in terms of hacking culture? Is it economics? Is it community development? Is it personal development? What what it, what what, are the, what really makes it happen? Yeah, I mean, I think it comes from a lot of different places. I think for me, I kind of think of it spatially. So I I think of culture hacking as some people being in the system. Um, and that has a whole different job description because you have to play the politics a lot more versus a culture hacker who's maybe trying to design an alternative. Um, so where you're, you're build, building something more from scratch or you don't have as much bias because you're, you're sort of, yeah, you're creating this alternative reality that maybe has some proximity to the existing system but has some isolation that can protect it. Um, there's somebody at which he's talking which you're talking about reminds me of a fellow who was at one of the open gov nights before mm -hmm. it became before the hat nights really took off and he was talking about how he was working in City Hall and he was doing certain things with the database that were actually not officially sanctioned yeah and he stayed there for a long time doing it and he feel like he made progress but honestly, he left. He had to be somebody who had an attitude of like, 
this isn't where I'm going to be, you know, for the next 30 years. So well, well, yeah, I saw another network too that was basically whistleblowers on Wall Street. Um, and that's interesting. It's not only people trying to transform cultures, but also there are these saboteurs or people that are trying to bring down existing cultures. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, our friends uh, that are associated with us, the mutual aid networks, mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie Rurick and Chris Petit, uh, are two of the folks that we know out of uh, Wisconsin, um, just had the, had the Yes Men uh, yeah. do their opening uh, their opening night for them at their their summit. So they're very much thinking uh, in mana in man um, mutual aid networks. They're very much thinking about how do we reinvent this? Yeah. Uh, how do we not reinvent this, but invent something completely new? Um, which is also completely old. If you go back to the Amish, yeah, exactly. and if you go back to the foundation of the, uh, the cooperative movement, um, it's, you know, and even in rural America, the whole concept of barn raising and the community coming together and doing things. Yeah, I think that's what's really inspired me about Amish and Luddite communities was this idea that you have more collaborative entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot of practices that we can borrow from sort of intentional communities of the past, uh, hopefully without some of the baggage, too, because the, I think there is, I mean, this even where we are, right, it was amazing to see walking in this timeline of how um, this organization has gone through so many different periods of reinvention. You're talking about the Institute yeah. of Cultural Affairs. Yeah. 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 And honestly, um, I grew, you know, having grown up in Chicago, I didn't even know this existed. Right. Yeah. I, well, it, it, so, and that it had this long history. But it history. sounds like all the stuff that you're saying, like the, what is it? The tech of facilitation. Technology, technology of participation. Te technology, particip technology of participation. Facilitation all these, even looking at some of these frameworks, for, this is, I mean, so many people who are like part of this cutting edge culture right. are examining these things as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, um, one of the interesting uh, paradigms that I noticed and I thought it might have been a commons oriented approach that would fit into a chamber of commons but actually doesn't is the work of public lab are you familiar with them yeah. they they're working here in Chicago around the the pet coke piles and what they do is they are a nonprofit they define themselves they say we are a nonprofit um, built around a community and what they do is they help a community track the environmental hazards going on in their community. So they started down around New Orleans um, when there was the oil spill. A couple, what year was that? I don't know. And they started giving people tools so they could actually measure what was going on on the um, what was going on in uh, in the in the water around New Orleans. And um, it, you know, the the official the official word about what was happening there was just actually not accurate and once they gave tools to the community so the community could record it then a whole different picture of what was happening occurred and so we've got that going on here in chicago right now through public lab so awesome. yeah that's yeah. cool okay well um is there anything more you want to say about the misfit economy and and what we should take I mean, I hope take the away chamber of commerce chamber of commerce happens as a counterpoint to the chamber of commerce i'm yeah that's why i'm here to, today to talk to you guys more about this um i think it's really exciting and i think how we i guess we're thinking more and more about this idea of neo tribes in some of the communities that i'm a part of and how we can harvest best practices in community design and resilience from all these different groups operating. So, you know, here would be an amazing case study or, you know, hacker collectives or even like as extreme as like ISIS and how they are organizing as ways of looking at uh, decentralized systems. Uh -huh. um, but or, or even like hippie communes and intentional communities of the past, like what worked, what didn't work. Um, cause if, yeah. Intentional, there was an, uh, there was an article about intentional communities and the growth of intentional communities in the U S Oh yeah. over the last 15 years. It's been pretty incredible. It was in yeah. cranes. Oh really? Yeah. When was that? Hello? Uh, maybe a month or two ago. I'll okay. Um, all right, so if people would like to buy Alexa's book, it's called The Misfit Economy, and um, she's 
on a world tour right now promoting her book. Yeah. Uh, where are you off to next? I'm going to DC, but I was just at the Ideas Festival. Yeah. And then, and do you have plans for after DC or? DC and then Boston and then Maine and then Vancouver. Yeah. Oh, lucky you, Vancouver. I've never been here. Yeah. Oh, you're going to love it. So um, anyway, thanks a lot for sitting in front of my iPhone mm -hmm. here and we'll talk to you later. Cool. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And I'm going to turn it off and it shakes when I do that. I like your uh, cat user eyes.